This week on the Digital Marketing Scoop, we're talking with Stephen Ryan about the power of storytelling for branding. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Digital Marketing Scoop. Very lucky today, we're joined with Stephen Ryan. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, so Stephen, if you, if you would, tell us, tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, where do I start? <laughs> uh, I have a couple of hats. Um, I suppose what well, I suppose I, I'm known for a number of things. I suppose I'm first of all I'm um, a lecturer in CIT. Um, I predominantly teach digital marketing, more so on the the kind of storytelling, which is what you have me in today. More on the kind of social media content marketing side of stuff, strategy related stuff, more so than the the advertising el- end of it, the pay per clicks and the analytics and all of that. Um, I've been in CIT for probably five years now, um, and I suppose as, along with a previous guest to here, uh, is it Aslam, um, have probably uh, built the kind of digital marketing kind of uh, curriculum in, in, in the institute. First of all, we had the certificate in digital marketing, which is kind of now in our 11th edition. Um, uh, in recent years, we've developed that into a master's in digital marketing strategy, which Jen has been a, yeah. a graduate of. Finished um, now, yeah, <laughs> which is brilliant. And, um, for it. and, and <laughs> one of the first online graduates because we also developed yeah. online. So we went from on campus to online. So ha- that that evolved. Um, I suppose where that all came from originally, I would have been known for being the head of marketing at Photo Wildlife Park. I was there for seven and a half years. Went on. The Corksford FM, so he was in the audio game, like <clears throat> like you guys are here now at the moment, um, for two and a half years, and then about about nearly eighteen months, nearly at this stage, you know, I set up my own uh, marketing consultancy business called Narration, and I also have um a kind of a network, uh, twenty four stories where I put on two conferences a year and talks for members throughout the year, so all about marketing, whether that be digital, traditional, um, creativity. Uh, and also insights uh, and insights is broad insights doesn't necessarily mean stats and statistics it means kind of how did a business get from a to b uh, and, uh, and what was the journey that they had and stuff like that as well so that's that's me in a very sh- short nutshell but i could go on forever you know? you're a busy man so busy yeah. man yeah. <laughs> a busy fool something like that. um so i suppose Stephen, if we're if you're a, a company whether you're large small or whatever whatever it might be why do you think it's important for a brand to have a story? Well, if you think about it, it's stories are something that are taught from a very young age. So if we think about when the very first thing that we do, if we go back to our childhood memories, what's 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 the last thing that happens in our day? Usually someone tells us a story at night time. And there's usually a moral of the story, there's some sort of thing happening, there's a hero moment, you know, there's there's different things happened, or somebody has achieved when everyone thought it was impossible, someone has done good for society or whatever it is. So there's always these things. If you think about brands, um, first of all, the, the first thing that most companies do, and this is the mistake small companies do, when they start talking, they start selling. Yeah. But yeah. nobody should ever think that way. They should start thinking, okay, let's explain myself first. Who am I? Why did I come up with this idea? Why am I here? What's my ultimate goal here? Who works for me? What products have I had? And what do they do for other people? You know, so what problems are they solving? What needs are they satisfying? And I think most businesses forget that. And I think storytelling is really important for brands because if you think about it, our, our brains, we need to, I suppose, stimulate those brains. So ultimately, when you're putting out messaging, um, there's somebody at the other side. You're not talking to just a blank wall. You're talking to actual people. And if you understand the personas that you're targeting, whether that's a mom with two kids, whether that's a single guy, whether that's a group of friends that are planning a holiday or whatever, you need to figure out what motivates them, what's going to trigger something in their mind. So I've always said from day one, if you're telling a story, you need to have certain elements in there. So you need to either get them to fall in love with you. So you're using kind of emotional tactics and you're informing them so maybe it's a knowledge base so you're educating them or else you're shocking them you have the kind of unexpected element you know and that's what good brands are and and we're all sick to death probably of hearing jeff jeff bezos's quote of saying you know your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room well you have to give them something to talk to you about because 
if you think about it, when someone even comes to your premises, they've this they've probably researched you nowadays. They've probably done something about you know they've googled you. They might be on your social channels. They've built an opinion. You'd want that to be a positive one, you know. And especially if you're a brand that's maybe competing against lots of other businesses, you're going to have to maybe come up with even a better story again. Why are we the best in the business? Why do we do what we do? That kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of that, then when we'll say you mentioned like with competition, yeah. competition there. Mm. How what do you think the emotional tactic is the best way to to get to differentiate yourself? I suppose from other brands oh, where they're constantly selling, selling. Yeah, selling. it makes us feel warm. If you think about it, there's the, there's no I'm no a neurologist or anything like that, but there's a little thing in our brains and it, it releases. So when we feel kind of love or we feel warmed or anything like that, when we when like we go to the cinema. What do we do when we go, oh, God, that's lovely, or whatever, romantic comedy, or whatever it is, or something makes us cry, like a Marley and Me kind of film. There's a thing called oxytocin kind of releases, and it gets us to feel attached. So we feel attached to the characters. So imagine if you have the, it's a company, and all of a sudden they put people from their business within the ad. Now you start feeling it attached to them. You say, oh, isn't that lovely what they've just done? That's really nice. I like that. You know, you look at Nike last year and, and everybody knows that campaign mm-hmm. where believe in something. And and the first campaign was great. And, you know, it was, they were standing up for, you know, Colin Kaepernick. But actually it was the ad that they released. I thought it was even better, this dream crazy element to it because they had all these underdog characters. And, like, they had achieved... There was a guy, you know, battled a brain tumor and then ran a marathon, you know. There was... There was a guy who had lost his arm and, and was an American footballer. or was all these different characters. And then they went down. What did they do again? International Women's Day. They wanted to dream crazier. They showed images of, you know, people, uh, women at one stage not being allowed running marathons. And now they see, like, so Serena Williams, one of the best athletes in the world, if not the best athlete in the world. So, it's you know, we're feeling attached then to Nike. And probably the best one they had was a guy, and if people are listening to this... Um, Go look at uh, Nike, uh, Justin Gallagher's, because this was a real authentic story. And this was an athlete that Nike decided to sponsor. He suffered from cystic fibrosis. And um, just because he had cystic fibrosis didn't stop him from running in Martins. And he did cross-country running in Oregon State University. And uh, Nike heard about this guy, who was battling against all the odds, no matter what. And he, and he, he, you know, he kept pushing himself and pushing himself. And they turned up one day, the director of Insights, and it's all on video. They did a piece with him with Sports Illustrated to announce that he was the first athlete ever to be endorsed by Nike that had cystic fibrosis. And, like, you couldn't help yourself but the tears would be coming down your eyes watching it. It was just yeah. powerful. And and to me, that's it. Like, you, you, Nike from day one have always been about the people wearing the shoes rather than the shoes themselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah they, don't even, they don't even try you know? and, no. and sell you at all. It's, a, it's all about that, so that story. Yeah. The way it makes you feel. So they've used emotion. And they make you feel good, you know, yeah. and that's and that's the key. And if you feel good, then the next time you're in the market for a pair of runners, you're probably more likely to go their way if they have the right ones that fit you. Then you know what? So you've got them now to the shop. No, do they satisfy the problem? Okay, are they, do they are they the right size? Are they within my budget? All those things. But if you haven't got them to the shop, you're not going. You know, you're not going to sell. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean. And I think some businesses forget that. Yeah, you do the selling at the end. You think about the car salesman. What do they do? Like, they t- start talking about the weather. We away on holidays. We out for the jazz weekend or whatever. They start talking about s- kind of s- silly stuff that might be going on. But they do that to warm you around. And to kind of, l- less talk about the car. More talk about your life. How are you feeling at the moment? And can I zone in on anything here or know that? And maybe, you know, we can build a relationship yeah. and then I'll sell you the car later. That connection really builds trust between people. Really right? and, and you don't even, uh, even an ad can do it without you having to be face to face with someone. Like the car salesman can do it well and good face to face, but the, the, I wouldn't underestimate the power of how an advert can an ad that can do that across as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're a small, medium sized, yeah. large business here in Cork, what do you think are the best steps for them to take to, to try and bring their story to life? I think more and more businesses need to come on camera and show the real person. And I know most businesses are kind of like, they're petrified. 
Yeah. You know, you see a lot of business owners, so I'm not caught on camera. Oh, oh God, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't. I'm freezing this spot. I sound stupid. They'll come up with all these excuses. Yeah. yeah. Tons of excuses. Well, if you're really, really afraid, you need to find someone within your organization. No, if you're a one man show or a one woman show, sorry, but you'll have to. Yeah. There'll be no, like, otherwise, nobody will get what you're trying to sell. Yeah. Nobody will understand the reason why you're in the game. So, and, and I think that's the one thing, that's the one piece of advice I would have, straight away, get comfortable. And one of the easiest ways to get comfortable at the start, nowadays, I think, is do stories on the likes of Instagram, or it used to be Snapchat, but definitely is something like Instagram. Short, disposable, they're gone tomorrow. So yeah. even if you make yeah. a mistake, yeah. even if you think, oh God, yeah. I didn't like the sound of my voice, it's only there for 24 hours. You don't and, have to yeah. worry about it after that. <laughs> and the best way to learn, and yeah. it's just... It's just not Nike, just do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, do it, yeah, yeah. and you'll get better. Yeah, I'd imagine if I started looking back to some of the stuff I said two or three years ago when I started doing those little videos, I'd probably say, "Oh God, that's desperate." I even look back, you know, I look back on on you know Facebook, give you the memories thing, you know, yeah. every yeah. morning, <laughs> and I look back at some of the stuff I was putting up in 2000, 2000, 2009, 2010, I'm like. That makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> There's no picture. There's no video. Just text. It's like Twitter, but on Facebook. And I'm talking about mundane stuff that doesn't affect anything. So it's it's you know. But yeah. you learn as you get better do. and better. You, you get and better. better. You get yeah. better, and you you also get feedback from your audience. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, once you start braving it and stuff like, and obviously I have a very thick Cork accent, and uh, you know, and Some I remember. Typing, this will be yeah, fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Watch what when Google or Facebook start doing it. If you're doing it on video, yeah. uh, it's it's very funny when they start putting words in uh, in for me. Um, <laughs> but I always remember um, with the Cork accent, and I was doing it on Snapchat for a while. And I used to do this thing when I was in Red FM. So I used to go up my lunch break to get a bit of fresh air, and uh, I used to walk out in Corheen. So there's like little woods at the back there. There's a stream out in out in Corheen between say where Red FM are, which is kind of near the dog track. And where CIT is, and there's a little playground and all that, but there's a walkway all the back, on, on the back of it. And I used to do this kind of marketing talk, and I'd be kind of giving my opinions on stuff that I've seen during the week, ads, that kind of stuff. And I remember people, I had one lady message me, she said, I love your cock accent. <laughs> and I was like, I thought people would think that's a negative thing, but actually, no, people liked the fact that it was real, yeah, that yeah. I wasn't put on, there was no filters, there was just me. Chatting away, sometimes I wouldn't know what I, what I would have just said. So I would have had to maybe look back myself at some point because people say, oh, yeah, I like that point that you made. Well, go on. I'm saying, what did I say? Yeah. So, I were, so again, it was all trial and error. So you don't know. And the feedback you get from your audience and then people say, what do you think about this topic or what do you think about that topic? You get more and more feedback all the time. Yeah. I, I think that's a great idea, though, to start with something like Instagram stories. Yeah. Because at yeah. least you... you you know, if you can, you can't go back in that feed. You can't. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't. Like, and, and it's just it's 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 such a disposable uh, content. Um, I suppose kind of creation at the moment in terms of we're putting out these little ten second videos. We might do three, four, five of them. They're gone again within twenty four hours. Yeah. But you will see then as well. The other interesting thing as well is very much uh, real time. Uh, data analysis on that if you want to go back and see how Which many people ones? dropped off after yeah. the first one. Oh god I must have been desperate how, how many people stayed on you know then the type of topics that people really like or the t if you're talking nonsense or if you're talking stuff that they're really interested in yeah you yeah. know and it's a fantastic way to to build a relationship with your audience oh. as well like like you say if you're a one man one yeah. man band people they feel like they know you like they do yeah, yeah. 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 and there's so many people have said that to, to me like they say oh I, you know, I love your stories and stuff like that. And you'll always get people that kind of say, oh, you're fond of yourself talking to camera and stuff like that. You have to ignore them. I had a student knowing she said her family were criticising her at the beginning, you know. And I went through that stage as well where people were like, what are you doing all these talks for and stuff like that. But once, once you get over that first few weeks of getting comfortable with the camera, people realise what you're trying to achieve and they don't watch your video if they're not interested in your topic. Yeah. And the people that are interested will stay watching. Yeah, it has to become the norm. It has to become yeah, the norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you just blank these things out. Um, but yeah, that would be my piece of advice is get on camera, get used to it, get comfortable. And then once you're really comfortable, then you could start doing maybe 
couple of videos for YouTube or Facebook, long form type of stuff where you're a bit more in, informative because you're not comfortable with the camera. Yeah. yeah. You know, and know you're getting to see who the real person is. Yeah. Like, you I know? mean, even when we started the podcast, we go back oh, to episode stop. one now. So we'd, we'd, I'd, I won't go back for it. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I will never listen to episode one. <laughs> but the more you do, the better you <laughs> yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just practice. And yeah. like, we even see when we're going out to meet clients and things like that, they'll be like, oh, Jesus, I saw your videos on LinkedIn. Yeah. They, they, they have yeah. that perception that they have, we've never met before, yeah. but they, ha- they have that perception that they, they almost feel like they know you. And immediately, the barriers are down straight away. You're oh, going yeah. to see yeah. Oh, I love the the yeah. team and the click there are their sound i see their videos that's the kind of you know yeah. you build a relationship yeah. yeah you know they yeah. get to know you i always say that like say for example if you're in the service sector if you have a bar or you have you know hotel cafe or whatever you should be putting your front of house staff on camera and get people used to them because if they turn up at your hotel say for, for the first time they kind of say oh I, i've seen this person before i've yeah. seen this lady before she's lovely you know what I mean? Yeah, and they yeah. feel more approachable. I'm sure it happens up in the Metropole all the time. Uh, the guy, John, he's the concierge up there. He's always on Twitter. They have him on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. It's a great example because people are probably very familiar with him when he ro- when they arrive at the hotel. Yeah, yeah, we were working with a company like that. The, they're in the sales environment, we'll say, and um, like that now when customers come to the door, yeah. they're asking specifically for him. For that yeah. person. For that videos. person. Yeah. They've, they've seen him on the videos and now the rest of the team are... Happy years. I yeah. was going video. You and, know, and it's interesting with that particular yeah. client. It was very similar right at the start. None of them wanted to, yeah. to get on video. But once they did, and then they saw immediately inquiries starting to go up. Yeah. Once they actually started getting out there. Yeah, themselves yeah, on video. Yeah. It's beneficial to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then yeah, they'll yeah, jump yeah, in. Yeah. 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 Um, so I suppose, let's say there's, you're in, in that competitive environment and there's your competition are doing video and everybody mm. else is doing it and they're all kind of telling their story. Yeah. What do you think you know, in terms of making your story stand out or making your content stand out amongst what is a, a very crowded space. Yes. Yeah. Um, what kind of key takeaways would you have for people there? Okay, so there's a thing called the, the success principles that I've often talked to students and stuff about. And that is, okay, the first one, you can't use all, there's six, and it's not successes in the normal you know the normal success so what it's it's s-u-c-c-e-s so the first one is s and that's keep it simple okay so sometimes people make things way too complicated and people can't understand it so get rid of all the jargon talk from your business you know think of the person coming in for the very first time and they don't have a clue what you're talking about so and i see this especially in maybe b2b a lot they assume that their audience know what they're looking for and they're on their website, so now they know exactly what that business are doing, and actually they don't. So actually, just make it very simple, even a 60-second video explaining what the business is about. You know, I've seen businesses do maybe little animations in this in this way, and, you know, sketch it out. This is us, and this is what we do, and it just makes it really, really simple. The next one is unexpected, and it's to shock people, you know? So imagine if you did something... And it doesn't have to be shock as in terrify. It's not like in the nightmare realm or something. <laughs> but what I'm saying is do something people don't expect you to do. You know, surprise people. Whether that surprise your customers, give them a piece of content that they'd never expect, something totally different. Maybe you've donated something to charity or something like that or you jumped out of a plane or whatever, doing a parachute jump or something like that. Do something different that people will say, oh my God, did you see, see what those, those group, uh, guys did last week? The next one is is clarity. Be very clear, you know. So you're you're talking about being simple, but no, be very clear about what you do, what your business is. Maybe only have two or three points in that, you know. And then the set, the, the fourth one would be concrete. Give evidence, like testimonials are brilliant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put your customers in there, you know. People trust people. Yeah. You yeah. know. So you know, or put your own staff saying that they had, you know, they love working in the organization or whatever. After that, then you're talking about emotional for the E, and we talked about emotion at the start. And yes, if you can make people cry, you can make people laugh. Now, laughing is hard, but some people do it really well. There's a guy up the country, there's a guy in, in Sligo called EJ Menswear, and like this guy is crazy. But he makes me, anytime I see him, I laugh. And he did a Facebook Live before where a boy, he was, so he has a shop. 
and he had a sale, his Christmas sale. And what he did was he did a Facebook Live, but it was all the organisation. So the digi digital side was simple. So he just got someone with an iPhone and started recording it live. But what he did was he got a horse, he dressed up as Braveheart, was on the horse, <laughs> went through the street, then went through his shop, chopped off the head of, uh, of uh, a, a domain they were clothes on, then bust through a sale sign and said, you know, come down tomorrow, the sale is on. No, there was actually unexpected in that as well. <laughs> but <laughs> there was all to make people laugh. Yeah. You know, so you had the two. So he was actually using a couple of them. But he also had a simple message. He had a 50% sale. Yeah, yeah. So he was using all that. And then the last one is 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 the story, bringing all those together. So, pay, you know, have a start, the middle, and an end. Talk about maybe something that you've, you know, you've overcome. You know, and what was the challenge? And lots of businesses talk about maybe that when they started off, it was a real struggle. And, you know, now they figure out a way to do it better uh, and now they're successful. Something like that. Or maybe give a story of how one of your customers has, has struggled and because of your product, no, they're doing really well. Yeah. So that's the type of stuff that I, that I would be focusing on um, when you're getting messages out and, and getting that brand thing there. And at the end of the day, and I you know you guys, when, when I was teaching CIT all the time, uh, one thing I keep saying about is, is this idea of being remarkable, you know? Um, have something we're talking about, otherwise you're wasting your time. Because if you want people to remember you, you have to have something that sticks out from everything else. And I, and I think still there's huge gaps in the market here in Cork for people that are just a bit more creative. I see an awful lot of copycats, um, if someone is successful, what do the rest do? They do the exact same thing as them, but they won't be successful because they're copying what the first person did and they'll be remembered for that. Yeah. So if you have one crow do really well and do some funny, bizarre video, somebody in the industry can't do the same thing. because They won't be remembered for it. Yeah. The yeah. first crow will be remembered for it. You're going to have to do something totally different. Yeah. You know, so that's what I would think anyway. Brilliant. Definitely, yeah. Just that fantastic there, Stephen. Thank you very much. No problem, right. Um, in terms of if people want to find out more about Narration or 24 Stories, where yeah. can they hit that? Yeah, uh, so simple, narration.ie or 24stories.ie. And um, yeah, you'll get me across all social as well. So just yeah. Stephen Ryan Cork. Yeah. yeah. And we'll have those on all the show notes as well. So you can take a look there if you're looking for more information about Stephen. Brilliant. Brilliant. Stephen, thanks, thanks for having me. Cheers, man. Bye.